In a year that has been challenging on so many different levels, the final major championship of 2020 needed an extra day to determine the winner. On a cold and bitter Monday in Houston, Texas, Champions Golf Club provided plenty of theater and drama. Alia Lim Kim, that is, now a major champion. We welcome in the Golf Central post game. Steve Burkowski, Brandel Chambly, Amanda Blumenhurst with you. For the next hour, to break everything down, we saw on a championship Monday. Amanda, we'll start with you. What are your initial reactions to the performance coming down the stretch? A. Lim Kim played amazing golf. We saw her wear the mask the entire competition. So to me, she was kind of like that masked bandit that stole it from Amy Olson because Amy didn't give it away. She played well, but A. Lim Kim, 16 birdies this week, three in a row to win. It was phenomenal playing out there. Matter of fact, uh, you don't see this every day. Uh, matter of fact, it's been 25 years since someone came from five behind to win the U.S. Women's Open on Sunday. The last to do it with Annika Sorenstam just getting her career started. She shot 68 and chased down Meg Mallon. It ties a record. It had been done six previous times, now seven. A. Lim Kim also birdie in the last. That happens so infrequently that it, when it does, you hardly ever forget it. Of course, everybody can remember uh, Phil Mickelson birdie in the last hole at the 2004 Masters. Yoon Hee Ji birdied the last hole at the 2009 U.S. Women's open and who could forget birdie kim holding out from the bunker in 2005 but she didn't just birdie the last hole she birdied the last three holes racks my brain to try to come up with anybody who had done that to win a u.s women's open of course charles schwartzel did it to win the masters but he added one more birdie four uh, tom watson 1977 duel in the sun birdied three of his last four holes what she did today was stand up at the biggest moment of his life and do something that well you'd have to rack your brain to come up with anything comparable Plenty of drama, plenty of storylines. Let's take a look at how this final round played out at Champions Golf Club. And remember, the final round was supposed to be played on Sunday. Let's go back to yesterday morning, 10, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Play was suspended. It was decided later in the afternoon that it would not resume until Monday morning. So everyone threw down the tees, threw down the markers, make sure they know where they were going to pick things up on Monday. And some of the leaders had not even teed off, but they did return and boy was it cold was it chilly they were bundled up they were ready to go skiing this though is actually the final round of a golf tournament how about Hanako Shibuna there's one way to stay warm up Brandon you can just do some calisthenics <laughs> maybe keep everything covered but Shibuna the overnight leader in some trouble off the tee at the second well she compounds an error here hitting a tree with her second shot after snap hooking it into the rough I mean that's just nothing but a mental mistake you certainly see more than those in major championship Sundays or Mondays, as it were. Amanda, now her third. And what's so tough is then to have to come back from that, but a beautiful approach shot. However, that keeps on going because it is a USGA event, and those greens are firm, even with all that rain, would miss it and result in a bogey. She would drop the three under a one-shot lead. How about A. Lim Kim at the par five fifth? Well, we talked all week about how Amy Olsen at 68th in the world would be the lowest ranked player to ever win the U.S. Women's Open. How about A. Lim Kim, 94th in the world at this point? It was just a good story. Amy Olsen struggled early, three over on the day after bogeys at two, three, and four. This for birdie at five. This for me was her turning point. Sometimes you just need that one putt to fall to turn your attitude around how you feel about your game and that's what did it for her one under two back now Shibuno par five fifth tester for par well after blading her wedge over the green off of the mud an incredible pitch shot gut check moment huge moment and it was all class three under two shot advantage Olsen her second at six she actually crushed her drive off the tee now has had a nice shorter club into the green and took advantage of that by knocking it in tight that would get her to two under one back. She's meeting with the media as we speak. We'll get to that momentarily. How about Jin Young Ko at the par three eighth, her tee shot? She made one birdie at the fifth and a gorgeous swing here. Up and down, she's looking and it was all over the flag. She would get to one under, two shots off the lead. Now Shibuna, the par four seventh, her short one for par. Yeah, we saw a lot of missed short putts early, and I think it's just because they were so cold and got tight. That was a tiny putt and would bogey. Drops the two under, tie for lead with Olsen. Now another look at par, the An 10. Another missed green and another nail biter. Going to miss. She would drop to one under Amy Olsen. Now a one-shot lead. Shibuno at the par 4-10, her third. 
Yeah, we call her the smiling Cinderella, but we didn't see a ton of smiles out there today. It was a real grind for Hanako, and she runs that well past her fourth bogey of the day. Back to even par, two shots off the lead. Ailey and Kim about an hour ahead, making a move. This is the par 316. Yeah, and I'll challenge you to find anybody more casually watching a shot that could go in the hole in the final round, the final few holes of a major championship. She hit it, just bent down, picked up her tee, and kept walking. And the ball, well, finished some three and a half feet away. Yep, you're right. Great shot. Makes birdie one under, one behind Olsen. Now Kim's second at 17. She hit the driver, put herself in consistently great spots in the fairway, and then struck the ball so well today. She would hit this just to a couple of feet and would birdie this hole. A little almost gimme. Two under par. After that birdie, thumbs up. Tied for the lead. Shibuna, par 5, 13 for birdie. She had turned it two under, made bogeys at 10 and 11, trying to get back into the red. Put some pressure on the leaders, and she does it. Just one off the lead. Others trying to make a late charge like J.Y. Co. par 3, 16 for birdie. A world number one really showed why. She did not seem to be bothered at all by the weather today. Just kept making birdie after birdie. That goes. She's one off the lead. Now, Kim at 18. We saw it before. Worth another look. What a swing. Three great iron shots in a row. This one left her right beneath the hole with a beautiful look up the hill. Now for three in a row to get in at three under par. Tic-tac-toe, three in a row is exactly what she does. Sometimes when you start making putts, the hole gets a lot bigger in your mind, and it did for A. Lim Kim. 67, she sits and waits. Olsen at the par 3, 16 second from over the green. Had strung together so many good shots and absolutely striped this tee shot at the par 3, 16. Just a little bit too long. Unfortunately, it settled down in the worst lie I saw all week. That leads to bogey. She's back at one under two shots off the lead. So it gets us to 18. She needs to hole it to force a playoff. Again, another beautiful drive from Amy right down the middle and really does give it a good chance. She would have had to dunk it. And there's the celebration when it didn't go in. It's always enjoyable, but awfully cold to have that champagne celebration on a bitter Monday, but nothing bitter about the performance uh, for Aileen Kim, the 25-year-old, able to survive the elements, becomes a major champion. Two-way tie for second, Jin Young Ko and Amy Olson. And speaking of Olson, she met with the media just moments ago. Yeah, obviously very um, super mixed emotions. Um, you know, it was a it was a long day yesterday, and um, you know, not being able to play. But I did get some good rest. And coming out this morning, I had no idea what to expect. Um, you know, it was just one of those things. I felt very weak and helpless the last couple of days, um, and probably same same went today on the golf course. I, I really believe the Lord, Lord just carried me through. Um, you know, just so many just makes you realize how much bigger life is than golf. Um, but pleased with my finish overall and my performance. Yeah, some absolutely great golf this week. A lot for you to take out of this from a confidence level, I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I struck the ball really well all week, and I putted great all week. Um, yeah, it was it was really fun to play well, to put four good rounds together. Um, and, you know, just a lot of confidence going into you know the next event. Richard? Yeah, first of all, congratulations on a great tournament. Was there a target score that you were looking at that you thought you might have to shoot today? And also, are you surprised that somebody put together a four under round today? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely out there. There were, you had to, again, like every week you had to, or every day you had to pick which pins you were going to go at and which ones you weren't. But there were birdies out there. Still a great round, obviously. Um, you know, I kind of assumed it was going to be between me and, and Hinoko, you know. I just thought that it was going to be um, potentially between us and definitely surprised to see someone come kind of from behind and put that good of a round together. Brian. Amy, the um, shot on 16, can you walk us through that, what club it was and what went through your head as it's in the air? Yeah, um, I had 180 to the pin and 
I needed to carry it about 170 based on my math, um, you know, to carry that bunker. Um, my five iron, I had a cut five iron on the previous hole and it had flown 152. So the, I'm like, I'm sitting there, there's no way I can pull that club. And I tried to hit a, a high cut hybrid, which I pulled off beautifully. Um, but it just, I don't know if it caught a little you know, downwind gust or anything, but obviously it didn't hold the green and got kind of a tough lie behind the green um, and didn't make it up and down. Yeah, Dan. Amy, how hard was it to focus out there at times? Did you allow your, your mind to wander? Um, you know, honestly, I didn't a lot. I, I, um, I knew I had to stay very mentally disciplined just to get through the day. Um, I, I allowed myself to think about what I'm grateful for. Mm. <laughs> and I've got a long list. <laughs> Karen. Was it a blessing that you didn't have to play yesterday, that you could just sort of talk to Grant and be there for him before he got back on the plane? And what would that, can you imagine even doing what you did today, yesterday? Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to say that. I, um, it definitely gave me a chance to get some more rest. Um, but at the time, you know, it also didn't allow Grant to be here um, until the finish, and we had to make some more decisions. But, um, you know, I definitely did get a lot more rest last night than I did the night before. Were you singing on the 13th fairway as you Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> w was there anything in particular? <laughs> I had Josh Groban's song, You Raise Me Up, um, in, in my head, and particularly the part where it says, um, you know, I you raise me up and um, to walk on stormy waters. <laughs> Thank you. So that was that was kind of what was going through my head today. Hey, can I ask one? Yeah, more? go ahead. Last question. Amy, can you um, can you just tell us just a little bit about your father-in-law? Yeah, um, you know we had a really. Um, a special relationship. He's a his big, tough military West Point guy. Um, loved the army, um, but had a particular soft spot for the women in his, in his life, particularly his wife and daughter-in-law. Um, and just incredibly generous. Loved to hunt and fish, um, and will have a lot of great memories to take from us with those activities. Doing those with him. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Amazing perspective for Amy Olson falling just short in her bid to win the U.S. Women's Open Championship at Brandel, considering what she, her husband, and the entire family has had to deal with over the last 48 hours. How was she even able to keep herself uh, in the mix coming down the stretch? Yeah, good question. I mean, she didn't win, but she won a lot of friends and uh, I think a lot of fans over the last few days. And it feels like an emotional win. And you see her tearing up there. It sort of harkens back to the 1990 five masters when Ben Crenshaw's longtime mentor, great friend and teacher Harvey Pinnock had died earlier in the week. Of course, Ben and Tom Kite flew home. They were the pallbearers for the great Harvey Pinnock. Ben's game was in shambles, absolute shambles. There's no way he was going to win that week. It, it, you just, it couldn't happen. And then somehow, improbably, it did. And of course, Tiger Woods in tears at the end of the 2006 Open Championship. It was his first win in a major championship after the passing of his father, of course, meant so much to Tiger Woods, um, you know, just growing up and uh, mentoring him, coaching him, teaching him, and uh, watching uh, Amy Olson over the last couple of days. Uh, it's a bit of a head scratcher as you watched her work her way through the round today. She hit every fairway but one. She's a really long hitter off of the tee as uh, Bones Mackay was pointing out with uh, almost every swing of the golf club. Uh, greatly improved iron player. Over the last four years she's only been in the top five going into the final round four different times. Now two of those were major championships. It seems like her game is uniquely suited for major championships but never has she bettered her position. She didn't get worse today. She didn't get better. She started in second. She finished in second. But again, she won a lot of friends. And I cannot help but think that she gained a lot of confidence about playing uh, with all the world watching you and certainly most of the world pulling for her. Amanda, what did Amy Olson prove to you today? Uh, just how mentally strong she is. Uh, obviously, she's learned quite a bit from the times that she did lose uh, her tournaments, her major in the Evian, 2018 Evian Championship. But uh, 
there seemed to be just kind of the sense of calm when she was playing today. Uh, she talks about being grateful for the things that she has and that really it put everything in perspective. And you think back to past athletes, uh, like Brandel said, with Crenshaw and Tiger Woods, and I even think a football player, Brett Favre, uh, when his father had passed away uh, from a heart attack, uh, similar to Amy Olson's father-in-law, uh, he went out and had the best game of his career. He threw 399 yards and uh, was playoff, uh, wasn't a playoff, but ahead playoff uh, they needed it and uh, then you go to even Nancy Lopez is who I thought of uh, her mom her mother had passed away in uh, 77 and just two months later Nancy Lopez turned professional and went out and had the best rookie year that anyone has had has seen with five wins in sh in a row and Nancy said that she wanted to win for her mother so having almost something bigger to play for and being able to have that sense of it's not always just about golf, you know, it's about your family and being there uh, for the people that need it. And uh, I saw that a lot with Amy today, when the Evian one, she did lose uh, in 2018. I could see her, she was getting so anxious on the 72nd hole and was kind of all over the place. Where here, she just, from the first tee shot until that last putt, kind of comes looking up at the sky, just having a very calming sense and like Brandel said, she only missed one fairway. She had such confidence off of the tee, and that just impressed me so much because it could have gone the other way. She could have just mentally checked out. But really, I believe having that perspective, that just sense of calm really made a difference, and it was very impressive to watch. Yeah, it was a great testament to Amy Olson, the inner fortitude to get through such a challenging day in the final round of a major championship. And as both of you guys said, she gained a lot of fans out there uh, moving forward. What a final round for the 25-year-old from South Korea, A. Lim Kim. Birdies at 16, 17, and there another at the last. Closes with 67 to win the 75th U.S. Women's Open Championship, playing in this major for the very first time. Shortly after the victory, she spoke to our Lisa Cornwell. Burko, pleased to be joined by the winner of the 75th United States Women's Open Championship, A. Lim Kim. Congratulations with your interpreter, Anthony Kim. That closing stretch of holes, birdie, 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 puts you in the winner's circle. You join some of the best Korean golfers in history, including Seiri Park, including MB Park, to hold that trophy. How special is this moment for you? Oh. 어 제가 진짜 여기에 이름이 새길 수 있구나라고 지금 체감하면서 뿌듯합니다. Uh, it's very honored, you know, to win the uh, U.S. Women's Open besides other Korean, you know, players. And can still describe in words that my name is going to be actually engraved in this trophy. It's unbelievable. Well, it will be soon. We talk about coming down the stretch. This is your first time to play in this championship, your first time to ever play in the United States in general. You came here saying that you wanted to learn and gain a valuable experience and walk away with the title. How were you able to close it out under all that extreme pressure? Uh, Honestly, I was very nervous, you know, before coming to this tournament. It's my first, you know, first tournament in the States, first tournament, you know, playing the U.S. Women's Open. But looking at the course here, it was, I was very over, overwhelmed. The uh, practice, you know, environment, the course itself, it was, it was just unbelievable that I really liked, you know, playing. An incredible performance. I have a feeling we'll be seeing you for years to come. Congratulations. Thank you.
Rest assured, she was smiling under there. You could tell the excitement as you take a look at the largest final round comeback in the history, the 75-year history of this championship. It's been done several different occasions, trailing by five most recently. What we saw today, Adelyn Kim, birdies at 16, 17, and 18, and now she can call herself a major champion. And Brandel, as we do a bit more of a deep dive into what we saw, Really, what stands out? How does somebody that very few people knew of, had heard of, is now the last major winner of 2020? You know, as firm as the golf course was early, and then as wet as it was, the fairways were uh, picking up mud. You know, it was all carry, no roll, and the green still play firm. You start to look at longer hitters. That's why I was almost apoplectic when I was watching Yuka Sasso hit a golf shot. What a golf swing. We're going to hear a lot about her. But also the same with Ji Young Kim the second. Um, I, you know, great move. Real powerful. Shot 67 in round number three. And I was talking about how she was the second longest hitter on the Korean LPGA Tour for the last two years. You want to know who the first was? Who the longest hitter was on the Korean LPGA Tour? It was A. Lim Kim, who had taken NB Park all the way to the final hole in a big match play event in Korea. So maybe not that well known over here, but certainly well known, well respected in Korea. And she's not just a long hitter. She's a phenomenal putter. As a matter of fact, this is one of the coolest strokes I have seen in a long, long time. It reminds me a little bit of Ricky Fowler, and that is a high compliment. There's play in her wrist. She lets the putter head get behind her hands. She's got a little hinge in the wrist. She releases it. It's soft. It's beautiful. And at this point, well, it was just a good story. 94th in the world. Nobody really thought she was going to make her way all the way to the top of the leaderboard, but off of the green at the fifth, it was a nice birdie. Now, this one, a little more difficult. Down the hill, breaking to the left. you got to get the speed right. you got to get the line right and she coaxes it in there. At this point, she's worked her way up where she's in the top five, so par putts get a little harder to make. The hole gets a little smaller, especially downhill, easy to miss it to the right. That would have gone in a hole the size of the ball. And then forward to the eighth. Again, this is up the hill, left to right, so easy to miss them low. That's four key pots in a row. Then coming down the stretch, it was a combination of long tee shots that put her in good position to hit some irons. But here she is at the 16th. And again, this is one of the coolest iron shots I think you'll ever see, just by the nonchalance of it. That's top tier talent. That's top tier confidence. That's also top tier relaxed. She didn't watch it with the sort of scrutiny that you would expect. She hit it, she looked at it, she bent down, picked it up. Again, beautiful drive here at the 17th. <laughs> I've striked it, I've done all I can do. It's up to the lay of the land from there on. And this one was played beautifully. Again, what you have here is soft fairways, firm greens. It's rare when you see that happen because the greens have been redesigned. They percolated all that water, they stayed firm. Here the whole location is on the right. Now, you don't want to short side yourself, but on the other hand, you're in the mix. So you got to take a little risk. She short-sided herself? No. She find the bunker? No. What she did was put it right beneath the hole and then went to work with that beautiful putting stroke. Birdie, the last three holes to win the U.S. Women's Open. I don't think that's ever been done. Certainly, I've never seen anybody do it more beautifully. Amanda, what do you think now projecting ahead? What is a win like this for Kim Do moving into uh, 2021 and beyond? Well, it's going to open whatever door she wants. If she wants to play on the LPGA Tour, she's going to be able to. She uh, will get automatic uh, status for next year. She's won twice over on the KLPGA, and I see many more wins coming on the LPGA with what Brandel said, just showing how relaxed she was. We saw all of those putts that she made. We saw the iron shots that she just had a very relaxed demeanor and physically was relaxed with her with the putting stroke and one of the reasons I will say she had to have been more relaxed was because she was in ninth place at the start of the day she was the five shots back we saw that list of past comeback winners like joining the ranks of Annika and Betsy Kings that's a good group to join but when you don't have that spotlight that final group there is something extremely freeing and relaxing about being able to come back because, yeah, they're, they're, the fans weren't out there, so you don't have quite the attention from the crowd, but you can just go out, post a number, go as low as you can, shut 67, and join the ranks of right there, that list. It shows you that while you want to be in that final group, and everyone says that they do because that means that you're winning, uh, you're, in, you're in the lead for a major championship. 
man, if you're a couple spots back, she was in the fourth to last group. She could just play relaxed and really show how she's long off the tee and take advantage of having shorter hybrids or shorter uh, irons into the uh, into the greens and really be in attack mode because at that point she really didn't have anything to lose. She could attack and shoot that 67. A Lim Kim, the moment was not too big for her up to the challenge. She is now a major champion.